Hallelujah. I'm so honored to introduce Reverend David Ambosun of the Victory Tabernacle Church, Lagos, Nigeria, who is in our midst today to minister to us. And so with a round of applause, shall we invite the man of God to come over? Hallelujah. Now let's give the Lord the best clap we can. Go ahead and let's give the Lord, let's give him praise from our heart. I know you love the Lord. Why don't you give the Lord a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Glory to God. That was such a awesome time of worship, isn't it? My God, I just feel like just staying in the presence of the Lord all the day long. You know, thank God for those praise worship team. God bless you. Hallelujah. You know what it's going to look like if you have this kind of a session in your home? hell in the morning before you go out and know that when you step on the road the devil is finished <laughs> praise the lord and what we're just going to do today is to uh, you know ignite that fire which will never die or quench in our lives i believe that the power of god is going to come down today and it's not going to go back from you and so we take that power and that fire to every area of our lives Praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor again and say, God is going to answer your prayer today. I'm so sure about that. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Wow. What a great, great time in the presence of God. Take your Bible with me into the book of Second Chronicles and the seventh chapter. Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter. We're reading from the 13th verse. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locust to devour the land, and if, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and we heal their land i want you to read the second test with me from the book of james chapter 5 and verse 13. let's read if you find it is any among you afflicted let him pray is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. 17 and 18. Let's go. Elijah was a man subject to like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth our fruit. I would like you to read that 18th verse. And as you're reading it, I believe the Spirit of God will strike some chords in your spirit. So let's go. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth a fruit. Father, we thank you for the power and the anointing of your spirit that is already in this place. And Father, we pray today that such power from heaven will descend upon your people that will change our lives our community our family and strike at the very foundation of this nation that the uk the united kingdom might be saved 
that Europe may experience great revival, that you will heal and set free today. Holy Spirit, we just depend on you and we ask, come in your power and fill this land. Fill it, Lord, from coast to coast. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody say a big amen. Why don't you say believe in amen? amen? I am speaking very briefly because we are going to be praying. This is a prayer summit. And when we come for a prayer summit, what we must do is to pray. And God is going to answer our prayer today. Look at your neighbor again. Say, you will pray. And God will answer your prayer. So watch out. Miracles are about to come for you. Do I have a witness here? Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of hallelujah. Amen. I'll be speaking on the power of praying people. The power of a praying people. The scripture we've just read talked about God saying, if I shut the heavens, if I send the locust, if I allow pestilence to come. Now, you can just imagine God himself was the one who said, I shut the heaven. He is the one who closed the heaven. He shut the heavens, he sent the locusts to come, he caused the pestilence to come to devour the land. Yet, he gives the solution to cause him to change his mind. He said, if I cause the locusts to come, if I close the heavens and there is no rain upon the earth, you can do something to cause me to change that. Even though I am the almighty, even though I'm the creator of the heaven and the earth, and nothing is impossible with me, when I decide it's the final, yet you hold the reign of power to change my mind. If I shut the heavens, if there's no rain on the earth, you can get me at a point to bring back the rain and to open what I've shut. And God said, all that you need to do, if my people, hallelujah, glory to God, if my people, that are called by my name we just humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways if they will just pray I'm going to change what I've said about them I am the unchangeable God when I speak is the final when I close nobody can open when I open nobody can shut it but when I shut the heavens there's no one that can open it when I send the locust nobody can change my decision but something that you need to know I cannot stay angry forever when I see my people humbling themselves when I see my people on their faces I can't stay angry anymore because when my people humble themselves I change my mind when my people pray I move when my people seek my face I begin to do against what I've decided God is a God of love is a God of judgment as well but when his people begin to humble themselves, what a loving God we serve. 